Hey guys, I've got a bunch of floral chert that I collected, and uh, a lot of this stuff's really rough. It's the first time I ever collected it in that area. Um, it's known to outcrop in that creek I found this in, so um, I didn't find the outcrop per se, but there was a lot of this this laurel chert in that creek. Um, but anyway, some of it's really nice. It's full of fractures, and some of it's not so nice. But I'm going to go through some of it and test it, and I'll, you know, we'll find out how it looks together. I made a Dalton last night out of a piece of it that was just on laying on top of the bucket, and I happened to grab it. Seen it and grabbed it. <clears throat> Turned out pretty nice. Here it is. It's pretty nice quality stuff, too. It actually had these, it was white down here, and it had these dendrites, uh, this black dendritic, like a little cloud going on in it. It wasn't really highly solidified, but it was uh, it was in there. It was kind of neat looking. I lost that part, but it turned out pretty pretty nifty. You guys, I hope you can see the colors and stuff. It's like a pink, reddish hue. I'm recognizing so much of this stuff after it's heat treated. Uh, as the same stuff I find in fields that all my artifacts around here are made of. Not all of them, but the majority for sure. A lot of it's this creamy colored white looking stuff. I noticed these smaller, thinner pieces seem to be higher, higher quality. This is super high quality. I can already see that. Well, that's nice. It's really nice stuff. I wish I could find uh, where that outcrop was. Cause I think if I could get it and, and dig it from underground, it would be much better. It wouldn't have all that freeze and thaw damage. So that'll <clears throat> that'll definitely make make something nice. Really, really glossy. So the only other chert that I think this could even possibly be is, uh, I think in that area of Indiana where I was looking for this, <clears throat> there's another type of chert that intermixes, kind of intermingles with the laurel, and I think it's called Osgood chert. There's, there's different names for this stuff. Everybody's got their own little slang terms depending on where they're at and who told them what it was called and you know whatever so but to the best of my knowledge this is laurel laurel chert pretty happy to be getting to know it huge fan already because like I said all my stuff I find uh, almost all of it is made from this. I think that Clovis over there I got is made <clears throat> of laurel. I'm so excited man. I got permission to get back in that that place where I found that Clovis. I found two other 
found three in the field all together and I haven't hunted the field in at least 20 years and he said he hasn't been letting anybody go so hopefully it'll be really good I remember exactly where I found them I can tell you that yeah this is gonna turn out into something really nice All right, I'll set this one to the side here. Grab another and spend a little too much time on that one. I'm gonna use my solid copper bopper billet. Mm hmm. Can't tell if that's a fossil or that's something that just kind of broke weird. A really neat fossil the other day in a piece. Somebody just said, Yep, that's Laurel. <laughs> stuff it's just so cracked up you gotta kind of work at them because sometimes you'll get be surprised there'll be a solid patch or nice material over 90 degrees there that's why that it's not wanting to let go change my angle on it and get it to come off there though yeah buddy it's really cool looking i don't know if i'll be able to do anything with it but i'll save her anyway i like to get into a couple of these larger ones Hoping I can find enough solid material in some of these to make some decent sized points. Here you are. I've been looking all over for you. Just, just no good. But like I said, I collected a lot of this stuff just to kind of test it and see, you know, what what the good stuff looks like in comparison to the rough stuff, and if there is a difference in the way it looks. Save yourself a lot of bending over. Sometimes you give them a pop and they'll they'll come apart in layers. And sometimes those so, those layers will be solid. Golly, I mean, look at that stuff. It it, it looks a lot like Flint Ridge. Some of the Flint Ridge that I see. 
This thing's full of cracks and holes and druzies and it's light as a feather, but it's looks good. Pretty nice stuff. Awful small pieces, though. Beautiful material. Just wonder if I can take you guys out in the light and show you what this look, looks like a little bit better. Grab. piece not too impressive there but some of this stuff is pretty nice pretty nice it glossed up really nice in the heat treatment So it's pretty nice stuff. I mean, it resembles Flint Ridge a lot to me. It's like a Chalcedony type stuff. You can kind of see the colors a little bit better. A lot of it's just this white and gray um, creamy color like this this one here that's what a lot of it looks like the majority of it i'd say but uh, anyhow back to business here i think i turn you guys around i don't want to make it upside down here So yeah, this stuff was uh, pretty plentiful in that creek I was in. It was funny because I had been looking around there for a couple of days and I had looked in a lot of creeks and in the river there locally and I ran into this older lady uh, sunbathing down at the river and was talking to her and I was telling her what I was doing and stuff and she's like, yeah. You need to go up the road there a couple of miles and take a right and go up there and ask Bob and blah, 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 and told me exactly where to go in this creek. And she said, yeah, I treasure hunt. And when I walk that creek, there's all kind of flint in that creek. And I said, okay. And I gave her an arrowhead I had made in the, in the car and I gave it to her and, you know, said thanks and took off. And sure enough, man, she wasn't lying. It was... Shirley Flint in that creek. Lots of it. I found two real big, nice pieces as soon as I got out of the vehicle and walked down there. I was like, man, I thought it was on like Donkey Kong. But, turns out I just got lucky right in the beginning there.
kind of looks like a pretty decent piece here. But see these thinner ones, I don't think they get fractured and stuff as quite as bad as the the larger blockier pieces. We, yeah, buddy. I found a lot of artifacts just made of this burgundy red, dark red looking stuff. Some of these pieces just turn like that color all the way through when you heat treat them. crystals in it like Flint Ridge does. What's up, dude? You come in and say hi. Huh? You just kind of flop down there. People's been worrying about you breathing this dust. to agree with them. Guess I could turn my fan on it. Probably help. Actually, not quite as hot as it has been. It's been miserable out. I was watching John Tuttle last night. He did a video, said it was so hot down there and where he was at. His neighbor, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was stepping on your tail. His neighbor went out to collect his eggs in his chicken house and they were already hard boiled. He waited too long in the day. Let's get him early in the morning. <laughs> he said, in other words, it's hot. If you guys haven't seen John Tuttle, check him out. He's got a YouTube channel. He's been doing this stuff since way before I was even born. He's got like 50 years experience, I think. I think he said last night he started napping in 1969. I think that's what he said. So if I did decide to go ahead and get rid of this portion here, <clears throat> I would be left with this. But I don't think that crack goes down all the way down through there. Looks like it might go to right here. Let's see what happened there. Okay, so yeah, got right down to there. Let's see if we can work it out of there.
I mean, it wasn't a wasted trip by any means. I found a lot of material. It just, you know, it is what it is, I guess. It's kind of the way it works with this stuff. That's why a lot of the artifacts around here, I think, are a little on the crude side. And I know it's like that everywhere, but... I totally agree with the whole, uh, you know, the raw material, the resource has a lot of bearing on the the, uh, the tool in the end, the way, it, it, the way they made them. You know, if they had tabular pieces of chert, you know, they, and real thin ones, they were making real thin stuff and stuff, whatever lent, lended itself to the easiest way to make the tool they needed with the material they had. That's what they did. <clears throat> I think that'd be common sense, right? A lot of people argue it's not, that that's not the way it was. But I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm just here to flint and nap. So. Yeah. Yeah, this thing here will make something really nice, I think. I say, I say, that's some good looking rock there. Definitely get a bird point out of that piece. Definitely, yep, definitely. I could sell this stuff as like practice material. Sell it real cheap, like you know, twenty bucks a small flat rate box or something, or like forty or fifty bucks for a medium box. I don't know if anybody want to learn on this. Uh, I would write. I would suggest learning on some decent material. I mean, we were, some people were talking about that last night, uh, about glass versus stone. And when, when people start, when I started, I started on glass. And I was having a hard time, a hard way to go, man. And think people have a tendency to be too rough in the beginning at least I know I did and I was hitting way too hard I probably still do a lot of the time but when I got a hold of some Georgetown Flint uh, a 
first thing I bought was Dacite. That don't, I wouldn't suggest that. A lot of people say it's a good material to learn on, but man, if you don't know how to prepare your edges, that stuff can step fracture and be a nightmare. But um, when I got a hold of some Georgetown, I got off Kurt, Curtis Smith. Um, I was like, oh yeah, I hit it and a flake come off and another flake come off. It's like, okay, this is working way better. And I had a lot more success with working with rock than I did glass just because I was probably being way too rough with the glass. So this might be a nice solid enough piece. I mean, I got a crack right there, but some pretty high quality stuff. All things considered, pretty high quality. And it looks like the crack's gonna stop. Right about there. So I'll, I'll save that one. Might get something nice out of that. Slicked up pretty good with that heat. Oh, uh, what else do I got? See, I didn't even test any of this stuff. I was just, if it looked decent, I threw it in a bucket. guys out there that uh, collect and use laurel a lot let me know if this is along the lines of what you find or um, what what you've seen in your area I, I found this near laurel indiana it's in franklin county southeastern indiana but uh, don't think you're gonna go there and and fill your truck full or anything like that because it it's not not the case at all and the, the couple places where I got permission to go and I found it it's still you got to weed through a lot of a lot of bad stuff to get a few good pieces but if you're up for the challenge more power to you it's really nice stuff i mean when you can get a piece big enough to do something with i plan on making some nice nice artifacts out of this stuff or replicas If I put my John boat in the river and float, I can. Uh, the river's full, full of this stuff. But same deal. You gotta weed through a lot of bad stuff to get to the good ones. But you know, it's probably like that everywhere. Hunting the creeks in Kentucky for Hornstone, it was definitely like that. Way more stuff that wasn't any good than that was good. Of course, that creek had been hunted pretty hard, too, I think. Hey, that was a pretty good one. Sweet. So that this piece here might work out if I can get that bump off there. Be rocking and a rolling. I'll take it.
one's giving me good vibes. Maybe I should go ahead and finish it out. Giving me those warm and fuzzies. As Mike Conkle says. At least he said that in one of his comments on Facebook. He said I was getting the warm and fuzzies. He was thinning out that by face on that video. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out on my Facebook page. I posted it a couple weeks ago. Mike's a crazy awesome napper. Makes a lot of early archaic stuff. A lot of Lost Lakes and dovetails. And he makes all kinds of stuff, but he's really known for his doves and Lost Lakes. Decaters and He makes about the most authentic looking Lost Lake that anybody I know I've seen. I got a whole folder full of pictures of his work in my phone for reference to look at. I've got all kind of reference pictures, but I just don't use them as much as I should. I really don't. Thing will make a really neat looking point. Okay, another good one. On a roll. Some of this stuff is really rough when you break it. Um, and then it does, some of it does improve quite a bit with the heat. This one might not have. I mean, some of it won't even hardly fracture conchoidally without the heat. And then when you let it, let it roast for a while, it really slicks it up. This piece did not slick up very well. Lots of cracks, and lots of quartz. But, you just never know. All of a sudden it'll get real nice in there. Killer stuff. Uh, let's see, there's another little thin one. Looks like it's gonna be kind of that same creamy pink color. Very nappable though. Dropping my braider. Highly nappable. This is 
it looks like Cortex on this side here. These big blocky pieces, they're usually got fractures, but let's see if I can get a couple nice arrowhead sized spalls off here. Let's see how it looks. Material's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. cracks going right in there and through the center of it man look at those colors that almost looks like coral Yeah, I'll be able to get some really nice stuff out of this material. I thought I might have might have been a lost cause, but I'll be able to get some nice smaller pieces made out of this stuff. I mean, absolutely beautiful material. It's probably tired of hearing me say that. That's absolutely beautiful. This one here feels kind of lightweight, so I'm, my hopes aren't too high. I'm not even sure why I picked that one up. I must have felt sorry for it. Ooh, that's cool little fossil in there surrounded by like chalcedony stuff definitely has fossils in it I found a really cool one the other day I think I had it laying right here but I think I moved it. Man, look at that piece there. Whew. That's super fragilistic. Expialidocious. Talk about a Madison or a Cahokia. Look out. Whew. Light shines through that thing like a tequila sunrise.
All right. So this one here, we're not not looking too hopeful with it. Not great. This will be a little better, I think. Oh, yes. Yes, ah, uh, yes, ah. Uh. really surprises me how far I'm able to get flakes to run by laying a piece down flat and hitting it above the edge, kind of just hitting flat down on it. Those flakes will really, that support really helps run those flakes. Especially on larger pieces when you're spalling like that, you get that surface contact. And you can just hit a, if you got a piece that's got that wedge, that angle coming up, just keep smacking it right on top of that flat surface. It'll just keep rolling wedges off here and they'll keep wrapping around the back side. I, didn't, I never knew that worked so well until recently. I was I had to spall that hornstone. Okay, I don't want to mess this one up. This looks nice. So I'll set it to the side. Crazy looking piece here. This one feels pretty solid. Heavy, I should say. Maybe. Kind of a large piece to try to heat treat, but I didn't care. I was like a honey badger when I loaded that stuff up. Because honey badger don't care. Cortex is not friendly. Not playing very nice. This thing's full cracked. Um. I already got to look at this one. Pretty nice stuff there. Ooh, what's this? What might this be? Looks very intriguing. Like that piece there might got a little too much heat.
get much nicer than that. Pretty stuff. Or if I get a little bird point out of that. Yeah, some of these smaller pieces will really surprise you. Kind of makes it fun collecting this stuff. Man, that is some, that's some pretty rock there. If that's laurel, it's the prettiest laurel I've ever seen. I'll take you guys out here and show you this and then Go ahead and end this video. It's 48 minutes. I got flint in my flip flop. Where's my. There it is. Pretty stuff there. It's not really doing it, doing it justice. better on a larger screen I mean I'm telling you that's just as slick as as any flint ridge heat treated flint ridge I've ever napped if I can find a source of that stuff look out very interesting Beautiful day today. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging in there if you did. And try to get some more uh, Let's Talk videos out. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do Let's Talk uh, uh, Punch Notching. That's what I'm going to do my next one on. So here's a, here's a similar piece of that Laurel shirt that really high quality stuff that I chipped the other day. This is kind of like the stuff we were just looking at, but it's a larger piece. Really looks a lot like Flint Ridge, don't it? Come on, I can hear all you guys agreeing with me. Yeah, man, it does. Dang, it looks just like Flint Ridge. Bet you can see through that one. Sun went behind the clouds. Pretty cool stuff. All right, guys. As always, I appreciate it. And uh, hey, give me a like and a and a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. How about it? It'll help me out. I'm getting kind of close to a thousand. Kind of close to seven hundred. I hit like six hundred and then it went kind of slowed down, but. Uh, yeah, if you guys are, are regular watchers and this stuff helps you out, maybe uh, go ahead and give me a sub. Peace out, y'all. Thanks again. Have a good day.